So last week we saw a lot about Hanumanji. And Hanuman, one of Hanumanji's um, praises is Jnana Gunasagar, that he's an ocean of knowledge and virtues. And guna, virtues, one of them is patience, the ability to wait. Um, so it's, it's, very, it's, a, it's a very calm, positive, understanding frame of mind. Um, like sometimes, if you see with very little kids when we're working, it happens all the time here in the ashram, they can't put on their shoes. And so you wait. And what it would take us two seconds to do can take them a whole five minutes. And, I'm, and uh, sometimes the mom or the helper, sometimes even my ashram sevikas will be like, I'll just do it for you because it's taking too long. But patience is let them take as long as they want to take because this is how they learn. And, you know, when they're young, three and four, they they going to take their time to do it because they're not efficient at doing it. <clears throat> or when people get elderly and then they walk slower. And, and I've caught myself doing this. Like I'll be walking and then they're like way back there and I'll be like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> take a few steps back, walk slowly with them. Um, patience. Okay. The understanding that it doesn't, there's no, there's actually no hurry. Is this quality that Beam drastically lacked, but Hanumanji has, right? And, and Hanumanji is known to help us reach Lord Rama. So that guru characteristic of Hanumanji, that he is so incredibly patient with all of us as devotees and seekers. But as tempting as it is to talk a lot about Hanumanji again, we'll move forward in the story. <laughs> they went back to the forest, I think it's called Kandaprastha, Nia. Uh, where Hastinapur, the, the Duryodhana, and the Trashtra, all of them are living because um, one of the rishis, it was either Naraji, Vashishta, one of them came and told him that, you know, Duryodhana needs to be reminded that the time is up and that you all haven't given up, that you all are still very much going to take your kingdom back. And also you all need to like, you know, Arjuna is prepared. He's gotten all the weapons and you'll need to make your presence known. Um, so they um, moved back and Kings used to have informants all over telling them this is happening, that is happening. And so the minutes the Pandavas moved back, the messenger came to the palace and told that, you know, they've set up shop. They've set up their house, sorry, not shop back in the forest and they all hear and the Trashtra asked, you know, and how do they look? And it's interesting that the description is that they've all become thin. So like Draupati had become th thin and she'd become frail. And in the very, when I was reading this, it's really like they have done tapas. And, I, and 14 years is really a long time. Like, and you, you living this very austere life in the forest for 14 years, you definitely gonna become thin. But, you know, it was Draupadi is thin and worn out and her eyes were sunken. And um, that was the kind of description given. But what was the interesting bit is like beam and halved in size. Like beam being thin seemed to be this really unusual uh, feature. Uh, but he still specifies, even though beam is thin, uh, still strong. Then uh, describing all of them about how they look, they look... Um, You know, when we, when we live these pampered lives in comforts and buildings, we look different. And when somebody works in the sun, like a farmer or a, they look different. You can see that the natural elements have 
uh, worn them out. And so basically that's what the Pandavas looked like. They, they had uh, the snow of the Himalayas, the wind, the heat, all of that they have had to endure. So the Trashtra at this point hears the description and he genuinely feels bad. So there's lots of time when the Trashtra just says the right thing, but he really wants the kingdom and doesn't mind doing away with the Pandavas. But he did genuinely love his brother Pandu. And so when he hears that they had become thin and frail and you can see that life's been hard on them, because you can, you can see on a person's face when life's been hard on them. Um, the Trashtra genuinely feels, what have I done? These are my brother's kids and this is what I've put them through. And so genuine moments of remorse is, it's nice to see that in the Trashtra. Because the, the, the Trashtra is this, I, really the Trashtra is our mind. You know, when Gandhavri is the intellect and the Trashtra is the mind, because our mind wants to be good, wants to do the right thing, has moments of compassion, has moments of, you know, like I should have. And so mind definitely has regret. And then just on its own, the mind will not live up to higher virtue. We need the strength of intellect to live up to higher virtue, unless the higher virtue is something we ourselves want. But even then, let's say an athlete working out for the Olympics. And so, you know, the discipline of training every day, the discipline of um, um, eating the right thing, the discipline of waking up early and getting enough sleep, all of that an athlete needs. And even though they want to win gold medal, they'll only maintain discipline if the intellect is strong enough to say, stay on track stay disciplined, stay focused. So mind on its own wants to be good. It doesn't seem to have the strength to be good. Strength really comes from the conviction of the intellect. Mm -hmm. And so the more we read about the Thrashtra's character, we can really recognize mind because there's goodness there there's wanting to be good there's genuine regret there's genuine concern that my poor nephews have suffered and the next moment when the Ryodhana you know suggests something he'll give in to it so now when the Ryodhana hears that the Pandavas are back he becomes really upset um like you know, 14 years are going to be over and they're going to want their kingdom back and this just won't do. Um, and like, why are they back? Like, why didn't they just stay wherever they were? And or, I guess that um, he knew that the war was going to be fought. He knew that uh, the, the kingdom was in his at the, it, at the bottom of his heart. And so the sudden anger and the sudden restlessness in his mind that, you know, the year, like it's been there the whole time, but now it's like when the person you don't like is in front of you, then so agitated we become, right? And this is not even that he was in front of them, but it was they back. <laughs> so we don't even have to see them. Just our friend tells us that, you know, oh, guess who I saw on the road today? And then we already like, why, 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 why? <laughs> Quarantine was good. <laughs> At least people didn't fly into Hong Kong. See, now this person came back to Hong Kong because there's no quarantine. And we haven't even seen them yet. But if we don't like them, what causes so much? Rest restlessness in our mind. That was a made up scenario. Please, everybody. <laughs> Um, so Karna notices that the Ryodhana is really upset and this is where you see that Karna is an amazing friend he cannot bear that the Ryodhana is upset yeah. this is, there are certain personality types right there's certain personality types that if somebody they love or somebody they is with, even close proximity, if that person's upset, 
It causes immense agitation in my mind. And then there's certain personality types. The person next to me is extremely upset, like, and then they look over and they're like, eh. <laughs> Not that they insensitive or not that they unempathetic, but they know that not my circus, not my monkey. <laughs> Especially if it's something like this, right? So somebody's coming to town, this person who's coming to town, I don't like them. Then why? Because 16 years ago at somebody's wedding, they took my part and they wore the better outfit. And then there was all this gossip and it's all something petty. And now, so now today I'm so agitated that they are in town. And then the person next to me will look at me and be like, yeah. <laughs> and go back to doing whatever they're doing. But there's certain personality types where when they look over and I'm upset, they're like, they upset. They can't handle anyone else being upset. Hmm. So Karna might have been slightly like this, but he definitely didn't mind other people being upset. He minded Duryodhana being upset did not sit well with him if Duryodhana was upset. He was very loving to his parents also. So possibly he was like, didn't want them to be upset. There is indications, especially with his mom, Radha, that he couldn't bear his mom being upset. So his solution. Whose solution? Karna's solution. Two. Duryodhana being upset. I'll cheer you up. Let's go on a picnic to where the Pandavas are staying and they've lost all their wealth to us. So we will take our women wearing the finest clothes so Draupadi will see and be upset. We will take the finest food. We'll take the finest wine, we'll take musicians, we'll take um, dancers. And then when they see us basically living it up, then they are in the forest and they don't have anything and we are enjoying their wealth, they'll feel even worse. You wanna cheer your friend up is very, very nice, really. But this is how you're gonna cheer your friend up? <laughs> you already know, right? This is this is a recipe for disaster. So how to cheer yourself up by making somebody else feel worse. So this is actually called tall poppy syndrome. You may have heard of it, may not have heard of it. It's also called crab something syndrome. So if you put a bunch of crabs in a bucket, Mostly if you put things in a bucket, or mostly if you put things, things means if you capture a creature and you want to keep a creature, usually you have to close it to make sure it doesn't escape. Okay. Like a chicken or a rabbit or a squirrel, they'll escape. <laughs> With crabs, you don't have to do that. You just put a whole bunch of crabs in the bucket. You don't have to cover it. Why? They will not escape. Because the minute one crab is climbed to the top of the bucket and is about to climb out, the other crabs will pull it down. I actually haven't seen this firsthand, but... This is what National Geographic people tell us that how it works. So this syndrome is called tall poppy. Means anything grows tall and is rising and is shining, it gets cut. You shouldn't be better than everyone else. But that means you shouldn't be more intelligent. You shouldn't be more disciplined. You shouldn't like even all the good qualities, they get pulled down. So you'll see this like in a friend circle when somebody says they're not drinking. No, you have to drink. <laughs> somebody says they're changing their diet. No, you have to. You'll, and this is like, don't be better than us and make us feel bad for not doing what we know to be the better thing. That's basically what it is. All right. 
Like, don't act better than us. And I like the word they use, act. <laughs> They're so convinced that you're not better. <laughs> if they all intoxicated and want to get wasted, you're not better, you're the same as us. Even if I'm not, you're the same as us. It's not even that I am judging that you are, I am better than you. They are judging it. And so they feel the need to pull down. <laughs> Uh, this is the height of tamas. Like, why do we say tamas is the lowest of the lowest? It's like, instead of encouraging people and, you know, uplifting people and lifting ourselves up, we pull everyone down. It, it, it's, it's, it's like a, like, you know, it, this is what scriptures would say is sin. Yeah. Like I don't use the word often, right? I don't use the word sin often because it's got so many connotations. But when we, but in every sense of the connotations, when we have this, because what's my thinking when I want to pull somebody else down? Right? Normally, everything rises, just evolution, right? Plants rise and just sun rises. It sets also, but rise. Um, upward movement of, of most things. And, and we also admire the, the mountains which are tall. We, we admire the valleys which are deep also, but it's because the mountains are tall that the valley looks beautiful. Um, so this suggestion of Karna is twofold. It shows what a beautiful friend he is to Duryodhana because he wants to support Duryodhana. He wants to make Duryodhana feel better. But it also shows that Karna won't discriminate and use his own intelligence and his own virtues when it comes to Duryodhana. And he's so the it's this is the this is the paradigm that gets presented to us. We all influence each other. So let's say somebody who has a bad habit of sleeping in, right? Um, and then running around like crazy because they're late. Are you a horrible person? No. Am I judging you? No, I do it all the time. And then somebody else, very morning person, jumps out of bed with a spring in their step and a smile on their face and says, yay, it's another day. I know such people. <laughs> so easy to think, so annoying. <laughs> I'll meet you for lunch. Don't disturb me in the morning. <laughs> Now, who's going to influence who? I can look at them and think, actually, such a healthy lifestyle. Rise with the sun. You have a nice long day. The air is fresher at that time of the day. Let me wake up with them and go for a hike at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. 7 a.m. is too hot already. 6 a.m., 5 a.m. This is good time. <laughs> So then I'm so sleepy, I'm so sleepy, but I'll wake up because my friend is ready and we're gonna go on the hike. And then I go on the hike and the air is fresh and it really is beautiful. And I'll come home and then maybe I'll have a nap, but I woke up early and I enjoyed that time of the day. So I can see something good and I can be inspired to do it with them. Or I make them stay up with me all night. So it's hard for them now to wake up early in the morning. <laughs> you don't stay up with me. They want to go to bed. I'm so tired. No, you cannot. We're going for the hike now at 11 p.m. <laughs> You'll get home at 3 a.m. And then how can they wake up early after that? <laughs> Even if they wake up early after that, they're going to be cranky. Which one will we do? Yeah. 
One, the scenario is when we have a choice of the person I am hanging with has better lifestyle habits than me. Am I going to force them to be like me? Or am I going to lift myself to be like them because I rec recognize it to be better qualities? The same scenario, generally, who wins? The stronger person. So if I'm the person with the good quality, I'm the person that's waking up 4 a.m. every morning. And then I let my friend allow me or make me do what is so against my nature. Why, why, why did I give in? And I know socially there's lots of tricky situations, right? But I just want us to, be, to have that awareness in our mind. That is my mind strong enough to hold on to it and I don't give in? Or am I going to cave and I'm going to give in? And if I'm giving in because they have a stronger mind and I can't fight it, or for some other reason, right? Even all of that. Maybe I myself am flexible with my discipline and I'll say two nights in a week I'll give in and I'll, you know, because otherwise I'm not going to be able to have a social life. Then that's me deciding then that's not weakness. But this is when actually I want to maintain my good quality and I'm not able to because of outside influence, then that means mind is not so strong. And that's fine if my mind is not so strong because I can make it strong. So now what I have to do is strengthen mind. Mm -hmm. Not a horrendous situation. But if I'm the type that I'm not the one with the good quality, my friend is the one with the good quality and I'm dragging them down, horrendous situation. Because <laughs> that is immense tamas. So I talk about this in the love letters also. Um, love is when we encourage the person to be the best version of themselves. We don't force them to do what is not good for them, right? Hmm. Okay, so what's Karina's plan? Let's go and make them really jealous of all the wealth that they earned and we are enjoying. Like it's not even just bad enough that I'm rich, you poor, let me rub it in your face. This is the Pandava's wealth <laughs> that they are enjoying. <clears throat> so off they go on this wonderful picnic. Who goes? Duryodhana, Dushashen, Shakuni, and Karna. This is the foursome. These four of them always hanging out, getting up to no good whatsoever. <laughs> and then they go into the forest and Duryodhana likes this one particular area where there's a lake. And when they go there, there's a Gandharva already having a picnic there with all the they're not Gandharvis. What are they? <laughs> He's buddies. <laughs> so Duryodhana says, I want to have a picnic here, leave. <laughs> and the Gandharva is like, why? <laughs> because I want to have a picnic here. You should leave. And the Gandharva well. so like, I'm not leaving. <laughs> I was here first. You, 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 you want to have a picnic? You have, but I'm not leaving. So here also you see this Duryodhana's absolute arrogance, like anything in nature. Can you go anywhere in nature and say, uh, you know, leave? I'm going to be here. It's like, this is not even a house or anything. This is a, a lake. Hmm. But... Um, and because he was king, he, he thought he could just order anything around, anyone, anything around. So the Gandharva says, well, if you've insulted me like this, then we, I will fight you. And if you win, you can have this place. Otherwise, you have to leave. This is no ordinary Gandharva. Actually, no Gandharva is ordinary. They're from the heavenly regions. Obviously, they have more Shakti than humans. But it was one Gandharva against Shakuni, Karna, Duryodhana, and Dushashan. Now they're all very skilled warriors. Actually, Shakuni, I don't know so much, but he must have been because he lasted quite long in the war. So he must have had some skill. 
um, they they not able to fight the Gandharva. They are getting completely bashed to the point where Karna runs away. Please, please note, Kshatriya Dharma is you stay and you fight. Under no condition do you run away. Karna, who gets praised for the max of his skill in archery and warfare, fighting against this Gandharva, he runs away. And then this was the same Karna who wanted to make Duryodhana feel better, so took him on this picnic, and Duryodhana is fighting the Gandharva, and Karna runs away. Vada, what happened to your friendship? <laughs> So credit to Duryodhana, he didn't run away. He stood and fought. I think Dushashan was defeated and maybe he collapsed or he ran away too. Shakuni, we don't know. He's definitely left at some point, whether he was defeated and he also collapsed and then left, not so quite sure. But Karna definitely runs away. Duryodhana is fighting. The Gandharva wins, the Gandharva uh, captures Duryodhana, puts him in a net, and hangs him from the tree. You've seen this in movies, right? How they do this? <laughs> I didn't think they actually... See all these movies? They're copying Mahabharata. Because <laughs> this happened more than 5,000 years ago. No movie written recently can beat the 5,000-year-old story. Duryodhana is hanging from a tree in a net. <laughs> Now all the, remember they took all the entourage, all the ladies, all the servants, all the food, all the musicians. The servants go running to Yudhishthira <laughs> and says, please help us, the Yodhana's being captured. Beam, ha, 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 ha. He starts laughing his evil laugh. <laughs> And then Bhim is now praising this Gandharva to the hilt. Who is this admiral of the Gandharva who has done what we should have done 13 years ago? <laughs> they had this coming to them. I will go and touch the feet of this Gandharva who has captured Duryodhana. He definitely deserved it. He definitely came here to rub it in our face about the world. They totally guessed his plan. Like not a single of one of the Pandavas were for even a moment fooled that they didn't know Duryodhana 100% knew that they were there. Duryodhana 100% came to show off the wealth and it has 100% been hung in a net. So <laughs> this is now, <laughs> Beam is so happy. <laughs> I think in all of the 14 years of exile, this was Beam's happiest moment. <laughs> No, no, no. Meeting Hanumanji would have been the happiest moment. This would be his second happiest moment. <clears throat> Yudhishthira says, but those are all our sister-in-laws and, and sisters, and we can't leave them there unprotected. Beam, Arjuna, go and rescue the Ryodhana and protect our family, basically. <clears throat> Beam is so annoyed. <laughs> Beam needs half an excuse to give Gali to Yudhishthira. <laughs> He's so annoyed. Like, you know, you're this, this, uh, how can you even suggest this? You didn't want us to fight the war, but now you want us to go and save him after what he did. Da, 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 da. Even Arjuna is not so keen. Arjuna is kind of not saying anything, but looking at Yudhishthira like, really? You're really going to make me go help Duryodhana? <laughs> I love you. I really love you. But really? No, don't do this. <laughs> and then Yudhishthira says a beautiful thing. Between them and us, the Kauravas and the Pandavas, we may not get along and we may not agree. We may not like each other. And so between them and us, we are five and they are hundred. But to the outside world, we are 105. They are our family. And when they are in trouble, we will go help them. Beam is not impressed. 
Beam is like, I knew you were going to mar our one dialogue like this, but I don't care about unity. I don't want to support them. They are no family to me. Then finally, Yudhishthira says, so didn't you make a vow? What happens to your vow is the Ryodhana is going to be hanging from one tree and dies that way. Then suddenly Beam was, oh yeah. <laughs> I want to be the one killing Duryodhana. Who's taking this privilege away from me? So this was the only reason Beam goes, because he wants to fulfill his vow and <clears throat> get his revenge for what they did to Draupadi. By Arjuna had already agreed because he understood that you know, there's other people were, um, what's the word? Innocent. Like the ladies have come along for this party, the servants, the singers, the dancers, they are innocent. They don't need to be persecuted by the Gandharva. It's only Duryodhana that needs to be persecuted by the, but they're not going to be able to go back to the palace if Duryodhana is hanging on the tree because, you know, they'll get uh, beheaded when they go back without having rescued him. <clears throat> so Bhim and Arjuna come. And so remember, four of them fought this Gandharva before. Tushashan, Shakuni, Duryodhana, and Karna. Now it's just Bhim and Arjuna fighting the same Gandharva. And they win. <laughs> Who wins? Bhim and Arjuna win. And they win within a very short period of time. And then the Gandharva shows who he really is. Chitra Ganda. If y'all remember, he's the same Gandharva that taught Arjuna the dancing in heaven and taught was in the fire and right. So maybe he didn't give as much of a good battle, right? But remember the first time Arjuna and Chitra Ganda met was when the forest was being burnt and they fought and Arjuna won. And at that time, they weren't friends. But when Arjuna won, Chitraganda held on to Arjuna's feet and said, protect me. And after that, they became friends. And then of course they became very close when he was teaching him dance in heaven. <clears throat> so what was my point? Karna ran away. Arjuna defeated that same Gandharva that Arj Karna ran away from. When we say that they were both excellent archers, that is correct. When people say Karna would have won, that's not correct. We don't know who would have won because there's enough evidence showing that Arjuna can defeat Karna. There is also evidence showing Karna can defeat Arjuna. So in a completely fair fight, who would have won? We don't know. But they did have one completely fair fight, which was the year of exile and Arjuna won. But doesn't mean he would have won every time. I give that. I give credit that uh, Karna was the best. But when I hear people say that Arjuna would have lost to Karna, that's not true. Because we see that Kar Arjuna has enough skill to be able to win. <clears throat> okay, so now, Arjuna says, what are you doing here? To who? Chitraganda, the Gandharva. Like, what's, what's all this drama now? Why you made Bhim and me fight you? And why are you hanging Duryodhana from a tree? And why, what, what, what is all this about? And so he says, your father, whose father? Arjuna's father, who is Indra, God of the heavens, knew that Duryodhana had planned this whole thing to make you all suffer and to... Um, make you jealous and to out of arrogance and pride and your father was not going to have it so he sent me here <laughs> to take up the lake beforehand and if the Yodhana was and if needed to defeat the Yodhana. now while this is conversation is going on the hi how are you what's been happening conversation why you did this conversation indra said to protect you because uh, this was the Yodhana's plan conversation Duryodhana is listening because he's hanging from the net and these two are talking in front of the net. 
he would have felt the small. <laughs> he definitely feels the small because we, we see what happens next. And then <clears throat> Arjuna says, okay, so now it's all over. You can let him down. He said, no, no, no. I will only hand him over to Yudhishthira. Because <clears throat> the injustice has been done to Yudhishthira. And the two of you haven't fought this because you wanted to fight this. You all have fought this on Yudhishthira's instructions. And so Duryodhana belongs to Yudhishthira. <laughs> Uh, so Yudhishthira comes <clears throat> and greets the Gandharva very sweetly and then says, you know, please free Duryodhana. They free Duryodhana. By now, everyone's gone. Huh? Karna's gone, Shakuni is gone, Dushashan's gone. Only the ladies, servants, all these people are there and Duryodhana is there. Um, Beam, Beam is loving this. <laughs> Arjuna's okay, like not extra excited about the whole event. I think he was more excited to meet his buddy. Um, and also you see here, Arjuna has this respect towards Yudhishthira. But if Yudhishthira wants to do this, we will do it as per his wish. <clears throat> Yudhishthira looks at Duryodhana and says, I love this line. Huh, exact line. Duryodhana, do not ever do such a stupid thing again. Spite never brings you happiness. Spite never brings you happiness. Go back to your kingdom. Basically go rule the kingdom well. And then I wish you well. That's all. And when he says it, there's no sarcasm. There's no lecturing tone. There's like, don't do this, you'll hurt yourself. Yeah. No added dialogue. Now you please take everybody safely back home. I wish you well. <clears throat> and he leaves. So Duryodhana is going back with the entourage and then he tells them, you all go back to the palace. And then he's walking around in the forest and he is miserable because he feels what I did was so horrible. This is one of the very rare moments in the entire Mahabharata where Duryodhana actually realizes how horrible what he did was. So he feels horrible for the game of dice. He feels horrible for stealing everything from Yudhishthira. He feels horrible about coming into the forest and wanting to um, torture and, and you know, embarrass the, the Pandavas. He feels horrible that he was captured and he had to be rescued by Yudhishthira. And most of all, this last line, I wish you well that there was no anger in Yudhishthira's face and there was no uh, taunting, there was no, there was little bit judgment, but not the kind of judgment that makes you feel horrible. It was the kind of, well, he felt horrible, but because it was Yudhishthira was so amazing. Like for the first time, he really feels Yudhishthira is such an amazing person and I am such a horrible person. This is short-lived, but he actually feels this way. And then he decides that it's better I end my life. So literally, he was ready to suicide. But interesting that he chose a very long, drawn-out process of suicide. So you know, when, as psychologists, when we deal with suicide cases, well, the first thing you have to judge is just how serious are they? so and one of the ways you know how serious they are is if they've thought it through how they're going to do it how does Yudish, uh, Duryodhana choose to suicide? starve himself to death that takes more than a month 
enough time for somebody to rescue you. So I'm not so sure how ready he was to suicide. He might have felt it, but I think, mm, He definitely genuinely felt bad. He definitely did have the thought of ending his life because he felt he was so pathetic, which he was. <laughs> this is also an interesting thing. If I have the thought I'm so pathetic, what should the next thought be? Stop being pathetic. Not, I'll end my life. If the thought is, I'm so dumb, what should the next thought be? Need to become smart. Let's go learn. <laughs> right? I'm so whatever, uncoordinated, clumsy. Next thought should be how to solve this. How, how have we forgotten that that's the logical thing? If I have problem, then so, so obvious, right? Now I need solution. Ending my life is no solution. Please, 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 please know this. Ending life is no solution because you will 100% be born again with the same problem. <laughs> Chances are, intensified what the problem because you try to run away from it chances are you're going to be born again with the same problem intensified please 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 know this karma cannot be escaped if you do the action the reaction will come if you are a certain way all the consequences of you being that way will come there is just no way to escaping it. Dying is not escaping it. <laughs> There's no way to escape it. You're going to have to face it. So when problem comes, then the obvious thing is think of solution. So if thought is, I'm so pathetic. Now, what happens? Karina finds Duryodhana in the forest. Duryodhana says, I'm so pathetic. I should just end my life. Karna starts crying. How can you do such a thing? You're so amazing. You're not at all pathetic. I ran away, but you stayed. You fought the Gandharva. You showed more Kshatriya qualities. You are more courageous. You're such an amazing person. You cannot end your life. Ay, what a spiel he gave. <laughs> then Dushashan comes. <laughs> they all find him in the forest. All those people who ran away, now finding him in the forest. <laughs> Dushashan went over and above Karna, held Duryodhana's feet. As much as the Pandavas love you, Dushra, we love you. If you die, we all die. <sighs> so intense. <laughs> He's crying, holding his feet. Karna saying, no, my friend, don't die. Then Shakuni comes. I love Shakuni's dialogue. Credit where credit is due, Shakuni is a smart guy. <laughs> if you really feel you are pathetic, the solution is, give Yudhishthira back his kingdom. You've done Yudhishthira an injustice. You are absolutely right. We cheated in the game of dice. So yes, we are lower. <laughs> there is no need for you to end your life, my nephew. Sounds nicer in Sanskrit. Nephew in English doesn't sound nice. <laughs> it's like saying beta. <laughs> like no need to end your life beta. Give Yudhishthira back his kingdom. Then you're not pathetic anymore. In fact, the whole world will glorify you that you have come to see the error of your ways. <laughs> what does Duryodhana respond to this? Dushashan, go back and rule the kingdom. I will die here in the forest. I will die in the forest, but not give Yudhishthira back his kingdom. <laughs> I am thinking he's not so serious about the suicide. <laughs> hmm. 
This is an interesting thing in psychology. <clears throat> we like to feel bad about the things we know we've done wrong as a way of me feeling bad being an excuse for not changing, right? What should I do? Change. But I don't want to change. But I'm still a good person because I feel bad. I'm gonna be ruthless here. <laughs> You're not a good person for feeling bad. That's just self-pity. Nothing glorious about self-pity. It's one of our greatest enemies, but we think it's a friend like this karana. <laughs> this guy is oh, Shakuni more than Karna. Karna actually wanted to be a good friend. Shakuni had no intention of being a good friend. Just pretended. Self-pity is this Shakuni, pretending to be your friend, making you feel better, but actually making you a worse person. Okay, so even though Duryodhana genuinely feels horrible, he gets over it very quickly, <laughs> returns back to the palace, and then decides, I will do a Raja Surya Yagna. Are, from killing himself, he went to doing Raja Surya Yagna. Why? Because soon Yudhishthira will come back. Yudhishthira did Raja Surya Yagna and got so much wealth. I want as much wealth. They don't deserve it. I am good as Yudhishthira. No, but why am I less than Yudhishthira? I can also do Raja Surya Yagna. And so off they went and did Raja Surya Yagna. And they did well. They, Hastinapur was a powerful kingdom. They had all the resources available to them. This was an interesting incident. I love this incident in the Mahabharata. It's a lot of comic relief in the intensity of all of the tapas and the war. Oh, this is a nice fun story. <laughs> Duryodhana being hung in a net, saved by Yudhishthira. <laughs> Duryodhana trying to suicide, nothing's gonna happen. <laughs> Next story is not so nice. <clears throat> Jayadrita is married to Tushala. Tushala, so there were a hundred brothers, which are the Kauravas, and one sister. The one sister is Dushala. Dushala is married to Jayadrita. Jayadrita is passing through the forest, going to Hastinapur, and sees a woman eating some fruit, mango, something, something. Becomes completely infatuated. Ask his servants, who is that? Servants look at him like you don't know who that is. <laughs> That's Draupadi, wife of the Pandavas. So effectively, that's his sister-in-law. Also, she has five husbands, the Pandavas. You should leave at this point. <laughs> he doesn't leave. <clears throat> He approaches Draupadi. Now, usually one of the Pandavas are with Draupadi at any given point in time. But destiny is an interesting thing. And the Mahabharata really um, is written as the destiny. This particular day, none of the five Pandavas are with Draupadi and she's only in the ashram with her guru, Dhyomna. And they are close enough. They're not very far away. Like okay, when you're living in the forest, everyone has their favorite rock to hang out in. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's just like a city, right? You have your favorite Starbucks. In the forest, what you'll do, you'll have your favorite tree, your favorite rock, that area where you go to hang out, uh, which wasn't very far away. Some of them were hunting and some of them were just chilling, 
reading during tapas. <clears throat> Draupadi sees Jayadrata. She recognizes Trayajata and so thinks nothing of it. So when he comes close to the hut, she says, you know, hello, very polite, <clears throat> and says, Yudhishthira will be back shortly, but he's not here right now. So she's assumed he's come to see the Pandavas. She knows who he is. He's brother-in-law of the family. <clears throat> But then he makes an advance and she's completely taken aback. He's married to Dushala. She's married. What, this is inappropriate behavior. So she uh, pushes him away and says also, what are you doing? Like the, Dushala would not appreciate you behaving like this. And Dushala is my younger sister. Like, I, there's no way I can even fathom this. Plus, you already know that. Um, but nothing she says. And, you know, so this is, this is, this is one of the, the horrible crimes that um, happen with human beings. Is he tries to force himself on her. <clears throat> hey, this... Uh, Lust that can creep into us makes us so incredibly animalistic. Okay. Even you bump somebody on the road when you're walking, immediately we say, sorry. Even when we're in a rush, right? You bump something or you walk, you know, busy road and you step on something, you know, be it a rat or a lizard or a snail or a, <laughs> why are you so shocked? <laughs> or somebody's foot, immediately we feel. <clears throat> oh, Australia, that used to happen at night. Sometimes you snap, step on a snail because it's so dark, you can't see them. And you, oy, you feel so horrible. Yeah. But even don't kill. You just stepped on the tail of a rat and then the rat ran away. Then you'd still, you'd, you still feel horrible. How can you not feel forcing somebody? How can they not feel? This again is incredible tamas. That you cannot feel somebody else's pain and, and the the sense of violation that is being done to their, to their being. And Jayadrata, it's not like he didn't have a wife. It's not like he, he has a whole kingdom. He has enough resources. There's lots of people who would have happily engaged, yet he forces himself. This is an interesting part of the, the um, Mahabharata, because here it specifically tells that Yudhishthira could read omens. So even though Yudhishthira wasn't there, from what was going on in nature, he knew straight away Draupadi is in trouble. Not someone's in trouble somewhere. And he could read the signs beforehand. So the minute Jayadrata got off his chariot, Yudhishthira read the signs, told all the Pandavas, heading back now. Draupadi needs us now. And so when Jayadrata was, he wasn't successful. He tried to force himself. The Pandavas all arrived in time to pull him away. And you can imagine Beam at this point. Beam's already been angry for 13 years. I... <clears throat> Being pretty much pulse punches the Tretra to a um, Jayadrata to a pulp, <clears throat> but he's stopped by Yudhishthira. Beam would have killed him there and then. 
why doesn't Yudhishthira allow Bhim to kill Jayadrata? Because this, this actually Kshatriya Dharma, he should have been killed. This is where sometimes Kshatriya Dharma should have just been followed. It's so tricky. This is why Dharma is such an interesting thing. Because it seems like Dharma to give a person a second chance. But like we'll see in this case, giving him a second chance is, the outcome is horrendous. Yudhishthira says, <clears throat> if we kill him, Dushala becomes a widow and Mother Gandhavri's heart will break that her daughter is a widow. You must remember in those days, women really did need men. Yeah, both in the East and the West. Like today, today somebody is a widow, of course it's sad, but they're not necessarily vulnerable. In those days they were incredibly vulnerable if their husband wasn't there. Um, and so Yudhishthira says, Dushala is our sister. We can't do that to her. I'm not sure why Beam listens, <laughs> but he listens. <clears throat> but what he does is he cuts um, Jayadrata's hair in some very embarrassing, insulting way. It says cut his hair, but I have heard one speaker say shave his mush which apparently is an incredible insult. Today, it wouldn't be such a big deal, right? But you must remember social norms were different then. That's why I'm saying for a woman to be a widow in those days was, wasn't a small thing. And so Yudhishthira's compassion wasn't just, oh, she shouldn't be a widow. It was like, you're making her incredibly vulnerable. You're ruining her life effectively. Um, and it would have, it really would have. But so, you know, when, so this is another thing. Firstly, should he have been spared? Shouldn't he have been spared? You should distress spares him because you don't make your own sister, uh, you know, go through something as horrendous as that. Is that dharma? If Yudhishthira does it, it's dharma, because we know he's the king of dharma. Kshatriya dharma is kill him. <clears throat> uh, they both Kshatriyas. Jayadrata is a Kshatriya. Yudhishthira is Kshatriya. So it wouldn't have been wrong to kill him. It's not wrong to let him go. That's why I said dharma is a very tricky thing. But what's not ambiguous here? Dharma is slightly ambiguous. But what's not ambiguous here is <clears throat> Beam insults him and ridicules him. And we already know that you insult a Kshatriya, you embarrass a Kshatriya, their pride cannot take it. We saw this with Drona and Drupada. You remember? Being embarrassing and insulting, it would have been better to kill him. They say this in the Ramayana as well. Lakshman embarrasses Shurpanaka by cutting off ears and nose. Would have been better to kill her. Yes, no. Ram said, cut off nears and nose. Ram is Bhagwan. Yeah. But when somebody is embarrassed and insulted, uh, they become very vengeful. So Jayadrata does tapas. Literally, he's beaten up by Bhim. He falls on the floor unconscious. While he's unconscious, Bhim cuts his hair, shaves his mush, whatever it was. When he wakes up, he sits for tapas. 
incredible amount of tapas he does, that Lord Shiva appears in front of him. Ask me whatever boon you like. And he says, I want to defeat the Pandavas. Shiva says, this boon I cannot give you. Why? For Krishna is with the Pandavas and they can never be defeated. And he says, but you, you've come here to grant me a boon, and that's what I want. I want to defeat the Pandavas. So Lord Shiva says, the best I can do is when Arjuna and Krishna are not around, you can defeat the other four in battle, but not kill them. So you can disarm them but not kill them. Jayadrita said, fine. If that's the best you can give me, that's what I'll take. This is very important when the war starts because this is the boon which kills Abhimanyu. And that's why I said, sometimes we think letting go is the more dharmic option, compassion. But it, in some other ways, it's not true. Although next week, we're going to see the section where um, Yudhishthira has to answer all these questions. And one of the questions is, what is the highest dharma? And the answer is, ahimsa. Ahimsa paramo dharma. That's very clear in our scriptures. So, Compassion. When you're compassionate with someone who doesn't deserve it, they will go ahead and do something horrendous again. Should I still be compassionate? Ramchandra Ji was. Yudhishthira was. I guess the answer is yes. <laughs> Thinking no. Kill him now. He's going to cause such horrible things later. But we don't know that. We don't know when a person can improve or change. Even Duryodhana for a few moments looked like he was going to improve. Even if it was just five minutes, it looked, it looked <laughs> like he was going to change to become a good person. <laughs> Oh. I love that line though and who's saying it? Shiva's saying it Pandavas cannot be defeated for so Krishna is with them we'll pause here any question? So her question was that um, dharma is not ambiguous because ahimsa parama dharma is the deeper and overall law. And so according to Kshatriya dharma, you can kill him, but there's a bigger law. It's not that um, technically, it's dharma is very subtle. So in Ahimsa Parama Dharma, Jayadrata does use his boon to hurt the Pandavas. And he takes the life of a 16-year-old boy. So in Ahimsa Parama Dharma, you kind of have to be strong enough to be able to 
when that happens, like you, you know, you're giving a person a chance. You have to be strong enough to be able to deal with the consequences. And Yudhishthira was. And that's why Yudhishthira could make that decision. And Ramchandraji is. And that's why Ramchandraji can make that decision. But when you say Kshatriya Dharma, a regular Kshatriya can't deal with that. A regular Kshatriya Swadharma and Swabhava cannot tolerate injustice. And so why I said Dharma is, maybe I wouldn't, maybe you're right, I shouldn't have used the word ambiguous, but I use the word subtle. So Dharma has, I have to be true to my Swadharma also. So even though Ahimsa Parama Dharma, if it was Yudhishthira making this decision, and I'm not going to use Bhim, because another thing that I really loved about the Mahabharata is Yudhishthira says, any decision we make out of anger is a dharma. And Bhim killing Jayadrata at this point would have been out of anger, and so a dharma. Whereas Arjuna, even though he gets angry, has enough self-mastery to act in a way that's appropriate. And so he, as and you know, he can he can fight without the anger. In fact, every time Arjuna does fight, it's usually without the anger. Even the main Mahabharata war, when it happens, Arjuna is not fighting with anger. Interestingly, during the war, Yudhishthira is fighting with anger, but Arjuna is not fighting with anger. Arjuna is fighting with compassion. And that's why he breaks down in that beginning of the war, right? Um, sure, there was self-pity and confusion and all the rest of it, but there was enough love for Drona and Bhishma that he wasn't fighting out of anger. Even when he had to kill Karna, there wasn't, even though he took the vow to kill Karna, there was a sense of, you know, this poor guy's curses <laughs> really aren't good for him. <laughs> He's happily to kill Karna, but there isn't that, it's not out of anger. Um, and, and, the ability to see another point of view when they do find out that Karna is his brother, Arjuna feels bad. Whereas Beam's a little bit more um, impulsive. So somebody like Shat, uh, Arjuna with Kshatriya Dharma killing out of injustice, it's Dharma only. Arjuna wouldn't have that Ahimsa Parama Dharma mindset. His mindset would be justice has to be served. This is wrong. This is right. We have to do what is right. And you can see that in Arjuna because when the cows were stolen and they had to be saved and he had to go into the room and the room to go into the room, there's punishment. But I have to save the cows, so I will deal with punishment. That's Kshatriya Dharma. I'll deal with whatever I have to deal with. I, I challenge a person means I will die with as a consequence. I'll deal with the dying. So the swadharm, the swabhava of a kshatriya won't allow them to think ahimsa parama dharma. Where someone like Yudhishthira, who has that more refined thinking, more maturity, more endurance capacity, is able to think ahimsa parama dharma and be true to it. Right? Me saying ahimsa parama dharma and then feeling victimized and feeling self pity and feeling this then you're not being true to it. So there, there it's yes, Ahimsa Parama Dharma is the umbrella under which everything else falls under, but um, it's not so clear cut as that. Hmm. Jayadrata, did he do tapas to get the boon only because he was insulted? One, he was insulted that Draupadi didn't want him. So that's what I'm saying. Firstly, he was insulted that Draupadi didn't want him. No, you, you're making a face, but 
when somebody gets rejected, they don't see their fault. So why should I say somebody? When we get rejected, we don't see our fault, right? Like I might barge into a room and say, get me this, 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 that somebody turns around and says, we busy. I'll be like, that's no way to treat me. I'm not being unreasonable, but what I did was wrong. We don't see it. We just feel rejected. We just feel offended by their behavior. He tried to force himself. There's obviously to you and me, this is horrendous. And that in itself is a crime and a sin that he's not seeing that. He's saying Draupadi said no to him. And he's angry with Draupadi. Vengeance killed the husband. Then Beam insulted him, was fuel to fire. Would he have done tapas even if Beam didn't insult him? Yes, because he was already insulted that Draupadi didn't accept his advances. Now, you and I seeing from a third party can look at him and think he's disgusting. He has no right to think that. But he's not thinking that because he made the advance. That's why I said tamas. And that's why I said lust can do. What, what is lust doing to a mind? Like to everyone else, it's obvious, but not to him. And when we are in tamas, we the same. Maybe we're not doing that crime, but we'll do other small, small things. And then we also think what's wrong with that. Remember once we, I was watching a scenario, somebody was a little bit inflated self-esteem, said to another person who was there, nah, well, a kid, and something, something, you have been kiss my feet. And exactly my look, like, what are you saying? The reply was, what's wrong in that? Thomas makes us very... The word used in Sanskrit is jadda. Dense. Translation is dense. This is why we need to stay away from tamas. Why didn't this Kshatriya Dharma come into play when Draupadi was humiliated by Duryodhana? So Bhim wanted it to come into play. And I, if, I, if you remember, I said even Krishna said that to Yudhishthira. Straight after the insult to Draupadi, Krishna said, Kshatriya Dharma, we go fight now. And then I just earlier, just now I mentioned Yudhishthira's answer was, no decision made out of anger is dharma. Any decision made out of anger is a dharma. You make that same decision with a calm mind, it's dharma. You make that decision with an angry mind, it's a dharma. Because the nature of anger is to hurt. So if I hit you intending to hurt, it's a dharma. If I hit you intending to right a wrong or to set things right, it's not a dharma. Swami Niji. That Yodhana represents desire. Did I say that? Did I say that Yodhana represents desire? He goes far beyond desire. <laughs> Greed. 
What does karna represent? Ugh. Well, a lot of self-pity. It's not represent the same way Ram represents happiness. huh? In the Mahabharata, it's not represents. The word used is not represent. Um, in the Mahabharata, the, this is the, their character flaw. Karna is insecurity created by abandonment, which was not his fault, but we can all overcome our weaknesses. Um, he always felt inadequate. which led to self-pity because he was actually very skilled. Karna. Yeah. Also, he had bad taste in friends. <laughs> yeah. Anger serves the purpose of protecting righteousness. Yeah. Anger arises in us when we feel a sense of injustice. So usually the thought linked into anger is this is unfair. I'm going to write the unfairness. Even though this is an incredibly controversial topic, although not so much anymore, but it was. Black Lives Matter. A lot of statements made out of anger. Did it help? No, but at other times it helped. Nelson Mandela maybe. Nelson Mandela didn't do anything out of anger. He was in jail for how many years? <laughs> he had enough time to calm down. <laughs> I can't think of an example, but I'm sure there has been. So they might get angry, but then they calm down. Even your district got angry, but then you calm down, think it through. So anger is just to signal injustice, not to act on. So simplest thing, this week in the ashram, something happened, I got a little irritated. I threw something to someone. They should have caught it, but I didn't throw it well because I was angry. It hit them on the face. That's what anger does. I know, such a horrible person I am. <laughs> it wasn't so big, it was small. <laughs> Don't get so scared. <laughs> I've apologized a thousand times. But in anger, when you act, it's violent. Even though I was just throwing something very small and I wasn't angry at the person I'm throwing it to. I wasn't even angry. It wasn't full blown angry. It was irritated. The act becomes violent. The act became violent to the wrong person. <laughs> but is there a right person to be violent with? There isn't, right? Yeah. It was a small thing. But imagine when it's not a small thing. The extent of our violence. Why did Jayadrita force himself on Draupadi? By then he was angry. She rejected him. But try to, try to force himself on Draupadi. Krishna's blessings, he did not succeed or get anywhere near close. Yes. You also got angry? <laughs> yeah, good. Write the email and don't send them. Next time I won't throw. <laughs> but in that moment, it's you to. You have to wait. With anger, you have to wait. I waited with the other person.
it just stays in you, right? Like this, my point was, like I'm saying, the person we were cleaning up, I threw, I wasn't angry with this person. But because ang irritation is in me, action is violent. Then giving class on Ahimsa Paramodhamma. <laughs> Cannot live Ahimsa Paramodharma if we have anger. <laughs> I tell these stories and they get very exaggerated when they told second time. <laughs> <laughs> um, sarve bhavantu sukhina sarve santu niramaya sarve badrani pashyantu ma kaschit kabak bhavi Asadoma Sakamaya Tamasoma Chote Kamaya Metyonma Amritam Kamaya Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasyam Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Gaurabhyanamaha Harihi Om